Hello, my Liberty Seekers. This is Nazdarachi coming back at you again today with yet another Helldivers video. They seem to be performing really well, and I don't know, it's kind of encouraging me to maybe become a more of a regular content creator. So thank you all to everyone who's been checking them out. What we'll be doing today is basically an updated version of my first Helldivers video. The game has undergone some fairly significant changes and different buffs and debuffs to various things from weapons to bugs and spawn rates and stuff like that. So I figured I would give another kind of like efficiency for playing solo guides. Now before I jump directly into this, I did want to point out that a lot of people when I did the last video were in the comments talking about, well, you know, why do you need to play this game solo? The matchmaking feature is super robust. And while I do agree with that, and I think that there's never really a time where you shouldn't play with other people and just encourage a more positive gaming community. The fact remains that becoming a better solo player will also improve your performance on a team, and it provides a fun, challenging way to mix up the gameplay a little bit. So I kind of like solo running myself, but I do play with friends. I do enjoy all that as well. Kind of enjoy the game for everything it has to offer. So that's kind of my two cents on soloing in this game and you know just trying to get better as a player in general because those skills do transfer over so what we have for you today is going to be a video from a mission i wish these people would shut up but we're going to be doing a video from a mission now it's a different type of mission from my first video i believe in the first video we did a nuke mission launching the nuke in this video what we're going to be doing today is transmitting sensitive data. So there's a little bit of a different, you know, meta going on within the mission. We're going to be running around a lot. And at one point through the mission, we're going to be carrying the briefcase, which does change up the feel of the mission quite significantly because it reduces the amount of weapons you can carry or use in that minute, unless you're kind of dropping stuff and juggling your, you know, inventory pretty well. So a little bit of a different experience, and also, as you could tell from probably the title, maybe the thumbnail, something, I don't know how I'm going to do that up yet as I'm recording this, but we will be tackling the flying bugs as well, because there are the new flying terminids in the game, the intelligence brief you can check out right there. So this mission will have me discovering them for the first time and kind of doing a how to deal with them and learning that right along with y'all. So we are going to be doing that narrated experience through the mission. And I don't have too much else to add. I'll be talking a little bit, uh, kind of edited in, edited in in post as we go through the mission itself. So I don't want to waste too much more of your time here. If you're new around here, consider following and doing all that good YouTube like, follow, subscribe, stuff like that. But if you don't, just try and enjoy the video and I will see you when we cut into the gameplay itself. Thank you again and I uh, hope you're having a great day. We'll see you in one second. All right, we're going to be jumping into the narrated uh, walkthrough of the mission here. Now, I did want to drop in on the extraction on this mission because, as you can see, I want to run a specific route through this one. When you are carrying the briefcase, you're kind of limited on what you can do, and it complicates things. So I dropped on the extraction because the power plant is directly north of there, and that will really help, um, you know, kind of improve our route through the map. Now, I know the controller is a little bit in the way right now. Someone did ask if I could add the controller sense and have like on-screen inputs, so I did do that. But I am running the Eagle Airstrike. I am running, obviously, the light armor you see on screen, the Legionnaire for increased throw distance and just being speedy. I've got the Orbital Rail Cannon and I've got the Shield Backpack and the Expendable Anti-Tank Launcher. The new meta with being able to one-shot chargers in the head with the anti-tank expendable has been great. It's been a lot of fun playing that way, so I enjoy using that. You got, of course, the orbital rail cannon for your usage against the Bile Titans. And then we are packing the new, what is it, Plasma Scythe or whatever. It's the, the laser rifle that is essentially just an assault rifle that... Um, can this, you can pretty much get through missions without any problems on ammo with this thing because if you can just let it de or cool down rather to get the heat to dissipate and then uh, you don't have to reload. Now as soon as we drop in here, as you can see, I have dropped in the extraction right next to the new flyer bug outpost. It seems they're a lot like stalkers, which is just a unique bug, bug type that comes from a unique type of bug base. 
So that's going to be pretty interesting dealing with them. I've never actually fought against them before. And, uh, yeah, they can be really annoying. I recommend if you see these things, kind of like stalkers, to just take them out as fast as you can. All right, I, I threw a grenade there just so I could do the five grenade trick. I covered that in my last video. You'll be seeing me doing that a lot in this mission. So you'll notice with these bug, the bug bases for the flyers, that as soon as you get a certain distance, that's when the flyers will start spawning. If you stay outside of their, I guess, sphere of aggro, they won't continuously come out. And as you can see, even with the shield, I got wombo comboed by like two or three of them there, but they will kill you very quickly. And if you shoot them and kill them in the air and the inertia of their body carries into you, it'll still do the same damage. So you're gonna have to be doing a lot of sideways movements and dodges to get out of the way of these things and just pretty much try and stay clear of them. I would rate them as an extreme threat. I mean, right up there with hunters as like one of the most threatening things that you can deal with in this game currently. Now, of course, they did patch things so that you have a little bit less spawn rates on giant enemies, like titans and, I guess, chargers, but a lot more spawning of small enemies. So that's where the Eagle Airstrike really comes in handy because it can not only destroy, you know, bug holes in certain small structures, but it's really good at crowd control. So you see me using the new assault rifle here, this laser assault rifle. And I do kind of treat it like a regular gun. Like if I have to just keep on shooting and overheat, then you know, you can do that. And the reload on it is pretty quick. But if you can manage the temperatures and say switch to your secondary or your support weapon, you can really like extend how much ammo you need. A lot of times you won't even run out of ammo using this gun in a mission. But hey, we've got that going on right now. <clears throat> Trying to just get resupplied. Like it wasn't a super hot drop, but it, this, this flying bugs and, and all the bug spawns can really get out of hand really quickly. Now I've noticed that shooting at these things, it's best to just prioritize their center mass, their body. If you shoot at the wings, uh, you'll just put holes in their wings and they can still fly with holes in their wings. You can see some of them flying around still like with holes in their wings. So I'm trying to get into their base and take it out as quickly as I can here. There's a lot of staying uh, on your toes here. You cannot stand still while fighting these things because they will swoop and they will cut you up. And you're going to see me die quite a bit in this mission. We push the deaths, you know, to zero and, and regenerating. So don't feel bad if you have to, you know, regroup a little bit. All right, now one thing I have noticed, which you'll see me do, if you're in the butt crack of their base here, because there's all these rocks and tall things around, it does make it a little bit more challenging for them to get a good uh, lineup on you. So you do have some defense if you have cover from high high things. Like, see, I killed him, but he ran into me anyway. I know that kind of is not very intuitive with what I just said, but these guys are dangerous, and having this cover over your head does help a little bit. It does help a little. Alright, just trying to land right on my stuff and recollect myself here. Now you saw earlier in the mission, I don't know if anyone was paying attention because I was probably blabbering over it, but um, I tried launching an expendable anti-tank at these things because these bugs, they don't come out of holes. They come out of those lit up trees up there. It's kind of like the mushrooms, but these things are more durable than mushrooms. The anti-tank launcher didn't take it out in one shot. The mission is prompting you to drop a hell bomb in here, which could probably be a really good way to take out like two or three of them at once. But uh, I was a little bit too swarmed here, and I knew the bugs were going to take out my hell bomb because I tried to drop in one already, and I, I landed on it. So I kind of destroyed my own hell bomb there. But you can use the Eagle Airstrike, your 400 kilogram bomb, or 500 kilogram bomb, sorry. Um, anything that's that magnitude or greater will take these things out. But right now, I'm just really trying to deal with being swarmed and uh, not lose control of the situation at hand here. So I just start throwing airstrikes in, and I figure out that uh, we don't have to use the hell bomb. Yeah, yeah, even that 500 kilogram bomb only took out the one in the middle that it was closest to. The uh, AOE splash on that is not the greatest. It does good vertical damage if you land it like right under a bile titan, but otherwise it can, it can be kind of uh, unreliable. 
22 kills on that airstrike there. That helped out quite a bit. Now, if the flyers are close enough to the ground, obviously, when things explode, they'll get taken out by it as well. But, um, again, that, that's not something that you can really rely on. It's just kind of like happenstance. Right, we've got one tree here left. Figured I would just take that one out and run. Just kind of get out of there. And similarly to Stalkers, once you take that thing out, I mean, unless there's a second one on the map, which I'm assuming is possible, um, you shouldn't see too many more flyers, if any, spawning for the rest of the mission. There's actually a video. I'm going to take this opportunity to talk about this while I'm just dealing with these, these flyers. But there's a video I watched the other day. I'll try and link it down in the description or maybe like a pinned comment that really goes into detail explaining a very well-written Reddit post about how the spawning mechanics in this game work. And the, the biggest takeaway out of everything that you can do is that time doesn't matter. You know, a lot of little details like getting near points of interest, none of that really matters with spawns. It's really just getting the main objective done and being in proximity to points of interest that really buff up spawns. Even running the mission longer itself doesn't really increase the overall amount of spawns, but um, I don't know. I'll, I'll try and link the video because it's really hard for me to break down in this limited amount of time here without a visual reference, but uh, it's a really great video for checking out how things spawn in this game. But again, the basic takeaway is do the main objective pretty much last because once you do that, patrols will start spawning in roughly like half the amount of time they normally do, and uh, it really complicates things. Of course, I am trying to go through the map here and clear out everything that I can. I don't think, well, I know I don't get everything. There's one blue objective I miss out on, the artillery gun. I kind of decided I didn't need it. And uh, one or two little bug bases that I missed out on. But sometimes that's just how it goes. With the buffed amount of spawns of like mid and small size like, enemies, getting overwhelmed is, is way easier now. And it's also more time consuming just dealing with everything. So... If you can't get every single thing done, you know, it is what it is. That, that's not the reason we're doing this. I'm not here to brag about, look at me, 100%ing missions. I'm just trying to get us through. I'm just trying to provide some tips and guide footage for how to get us through these missions. How to beat them successfully and as efficiently as possible. And get out. All right, we got killed by a charger there. You see, our lives are draining again with just how many little things are on the map now. It can be very overwhelming compared to when I made the first video, but we're still going to get through this. Now, uh, just dealing with all these swarms here, pushing the 30-minute mark, and I don't believe I have any of the main objectives done yet. There's a little straggler flyer from that nest there. I think he was the last one that we see now that they're eliminated from this region. Getting jumped by hunters. You walk around the corner, you get jumped by two hunters and comboed by them, you know? It's not always everything can be done to prevent deaths in this game. Sometimes there's just nothing you can do, is what I was trying to say. spamming a bunch of grenades at this point to try and deal with some of the hive defenders. This new assault rifle, while it is a great gun, obviously it won't really penetrate their armor. You have to kind of, you know, aim for weak points in between the armor or, or get them to turn their side to you. I do believe I struggled a little bit extra on this mission because there was a increase on cooldowns for the recharging of my orbitals and my fighter jet, so I struggled. Now that we've gotten all those pesky extra lives out of the way, we got to really kick it into high gear. Just retrieving all the stuff again. And trying to not get swarmed. Heading to the power generator. We lost all the lives, and we haven't even started the main objective yet, so... The fact that you're seeing this footage means that the mission ended up successfully, so you know that we'll be able to push through all these hardships. All right, taking out the brood commanders, I normally go for their head first because it will put them on a time limit until they 
kill, they just die, you know, via having no head. But uh, going for the legs as well is a great thing to follow up because it'll make them harder for them to get to you because they can continue to attack after they have no head. Little cockroaches. Right, I tried to climb over and vault that, but it didn't work out so well. I got steamrolled. Thank God for the shield bubble keeping me alive there. EAT right to the head. He, he literally did eat that rocket, but uh, I, I really am a fan of that new meta. You can also pack the recoilless. If you're running duos or trios, you know, whatever, I definitely recommend that as a great utility. But when you're in solos, not being able to have the shield backpack makes things really stressful. So that's why I kind of just use the eats because they do have the 70 second cooldown. So you pretty much always have one when you need it. cool thing about the eats too is you can use it and then obviously you throw it away so you can carry a second support weapon with you through the map which you will see me doing later again we're starting with the power here because there's no briefcase to carry so it's just easier to knock this one out first and conveniently it was just next to the um, extraction so it worked out now the extraction it's hard to tell on the map because sometimes it'll say that it's clear, but it is not always clear. Sometimes you'll land and it's extremely hot, so it's, it's just kind of a luck thing. Now, you will see me showcasing some of the stealth mechanics in this game now. Again, just because there are so many small enemies and they'll puke up more spawns, which is then just more and more small enemies, it does not hurt to pick and choose your engagements wisely. So basically in this situation, I just crouched and let this patrol mosey right on by. Didn't really attract their attention and didn't start a huge fight. I'm really just trying to get this objective done and get the hell out of this part of the map. So again, the way the patrols spawn, they kind of just spawn in and take a straight line through somewhere near your vicinity. I believe they can't spawn within 75 meters of you, but there are caveats to that as well. So I'm just letting them, letting them go on their merry way and trying to not cause problems. At least not at this current point in time. Ion Storm, of course, means you can't really use your map. You can't use your call-in. So I feel like I did right by avoiding that encounter. Because it would have been pretty obnoxious getting swarmed during an Ion Storm. And as you're moving about the map, just try and be aware. Again, since they've made everything more difficult, I don't quite play as greedily as I did before and I'm maxed out on everything so I don't need the samples as much as I used to but I still go for everything that's kind of you know in a direct path I just don't go out of the way to get a lot of stuff anymore because you'll run out of time trying to do that in solos flamethrower I picked up there the flamethrower was one of the weapons that was buffed like a week ago ish and it is fantastic now much better for dealing with all these hive defenders than the disposable rocket launcher or even the primary assault laser rifle so I picked this up and essentially carried it with me throughout the map and just dropped it whenever I needed to quickly pick up a rocket launcher so this thing was actually a kind of a lifesaver for getting through this mission flamethrower is great now so if you can find any procure on site weapons like this and you can juggle them through the map you know consider doing so because it'll just make you more prepared to deal with a lot of different types of crappy situations you're going to get stuck in. Right. Making good use of all the free supplies on the map and on our way. We're heading to the next objective. We can see that somewhere on the map there is a spore spewer. I think it's directly in front of me here. So we're going to line up a shot and take it out with the EAT launcher, I do believe. Flamethrower, unfortunately, not going to shoot that far. Now, there is some drop, so make sure you factor that in a little bit. If you're shooting long distances with the expendable anti-tank, it will arc like a traditional kind of bullet Coriolis effect. Which makes me wonder, I wonder when we're going to get planets that have maybe different gravity. I don't know. We'll make all that stuff kind of wonky. Maybe the physics engine wouldn't like that too much. I don't know. But as you can see, I am stealthing past some more patrols. I mean, looking at the map, they're to my right, they're to my left, they're straight in front of me. So I'm trying to sneak my way into this objective here to get this briefcase. 
as quietly as I can up until a certain point where it's just, you know, stealth only works for so long until you're detected. I'm gonna take this guy out from far away. There was only one of them, and I hadn't seen a Titan yet, so I figured why not get a use down on that orbital rail. I'm carrying the flamethrower right now anyways, so. Just, just a little bit of convenience factor there. Getting all of my good usage out of the bombing runs here. I really love that thing. I use it all the time. Now, you would say that the napalm one could be good for bugs as well, but I just prefer the explosive damage over the fire just because it's more versatile. You can use it to, like I mentioned earlier, destroy things. So that's why I usually don't bring the napalm. That was a nice 500 kilogram bomb. Something survived. Just spamming out some infinite ammo here. Let me switch to the flamethrower because these hive guards pushing up on us here. Are using the flamethrower, there's definitely some certain things you want to do. Like when you're shooting it, I mean, this seems kind of, I guess, obvious, but you don't want to push enemies while you're using the flamethrower because you end up just burning yourself. So I generally kind of lure the enemies to me and then kind of slowly walk backwards while I'm blanketing the area in flames. And I find I get the most success out of that. You can kill chargers pretty well with it too. It's just uh, ammo efficiency makes the dropping of the disposable anti-tank a little bit better than trying to kill them with a the flamethrower. Really try to take out all these little guys because all the little guys are the ones that are more often than not are puking up spawns on me. So I really like to take them out. Melee is good versus the little tiny guys too. I do apologize if the analog sticks on the controller sensor are a little bit hard to see. Sometimes I'm doing just very subtle movements with them, but. I don't know, something new I'm trying out. Let me know in the comments if you think it was helpful at all or worth having on the screen. All right, so we've got the briefcase now. I don't know if I show this off later or not, but there's some weird glitchy stuff that can happen with the briefcase. Just know that if you need to pick anything up on the map to hit the button to swap weapons, and that will make you drop the briefcase and then you can go about doing whatever. Because if you directly try and pick something up while holding the briefcase, it can kind of bug out your character model and make things weird. I think I do show it off later, so I'll just forget about that for now. But just, just keep that in the back of your mind. Again, going for the head first, and then just trying to get away from him because he'll die on his own there in terms of the Brood Commander. I generally do like to take out a lot of the little stuff before I deal with the Chargers, because I find that it's just easier to not get overwhelmed that way. Of course, another ion storm going on. Thankfully, I already dropped in the rocket launcher, so just trying to get these hive defenders out of the way and then deal with the charger afterwards. <clears throat> Figured I'd get a little bit of damage in there on him. And I walked through my own fire, so that's why you can see what I mentioned earlier about not pushing while using the flamethrower. This makes you eat up your stems quicker. Here you go, sir. Rocket to the face. And earlier on, I don't know if I marked it or not, but we just happened to stumble upon Dick Rock over there. So here it is. Like You can see, I go into it again more later, but you can see my character was kind of like stuck in a weird hug pose. See, yeah, I'm showing it off right now. See, if you try and pick something up while carrying the briefcase, you get stuck in this hug pose, and it really messes up your character model. So you always want to try and just hit the weapon swap button and drop it first. Then pick it back up. It'll make things less frustrating. Which what I'm trying to do right here, but I'm also in the process of getting swarmed at the same time. Ah, 
I always try and confuse enemy pathing as much as possible by just dipping and ducking around various obstacles. Almost walked into a bug hole there, which would have probably not ended super well, so... I reevaluated my directional choices there. Of course, I threw the orbital rail, and it went for a brood commander instead of the charger. Sometimes that happens. It seems to have a hard time deciding between priority between those two, brood commanders and chargers. But we managed to get through this. So I usually do the dive right there when the hunters have hit me with their tongue, and I've got that poison slow effect on me. Otherwise, I don't usually dive too much. Good little 23-er right there with that airstrike. Trying to prioritize the targets that aren't hive defenders here. That will actually get hurt and then swap over to the flamethrower maybe when the defenders get closer. Indeed. Some cooked bug. You know, that's kind of how I feel about seafood, but... I don't really want to get into that debate right now. I know plenty of people out there like it, but not for me. And some more cooking, and forgot to do the five grenade trick, so I tossed one there and got it in. Like I said, that, having that extra grenade, something I talked about in my last tips and tricks video, is just so, so valuable. Especially if you have bile spewers, the big tick, big old green ones, or even the nursing spewers. You can kind of tell when the nursing spewers are around you, though, because they have a, an orange fog that pushes into the map. And just having to carry that container with you around places, drop it, get done what you need to get done, and then be on your way. And taking out all those little guys so they can't cough up more spawns. I think I'm going to have to do too many edits to speed up travel time because with all the, <laughs> with all the monsters they've added in here, not too, much, not too much time where things are just calm and chill. All right, now I, I could use the 500 kilogram bomb to blow up this building. The Eagle Airstrike does not work taking this thing out. It's not quite strong enough, but uh, they give you free hell bombs, so why not use free hell bombs? At this point, I'm just trying to defend the hell bomb because the bugs, they will prioritize it and go in and try and destroy it. Just like they do your supply drops and whatever else. Because brood commanders love to destroy stuff. And there it goes. shooting them under their armor plating. It still takes a good bit of time with this rifle, but it's definitely an option. I'm trying to spam grenades to get this done as quickly as possible here. Dropping a three supply with bounces and another hell bomb. Stuck on terrain. It's always fun. Now I gotta grab the briefcase and then get out. Something that this mission is definitely one of the ones that's a lot easier when you have a teammate. Alternatively, you can also pack the primary weapon SMG because that one you can continue to use even while carrying the briefcase. It's a one-hander.
So now, I'm starting to get low on time, and I realize that. Because all these swarms take a while to deal with, but I still want to get as much of the bug bases taken out as I possibly can. Five hundred kilogram bomb is free today, so might as well get some good usage out of it. Not something I normally bring. I kind of default to the orbital rail instead, which does more damage, I feel like, but it's just less destructive overall. Also, rail cannon not good for clearing out holes and bases. Cooldown is way too high. Shield bubble showing its value there. You know, the charger's just mauling us for a while, and we managed to walk out unscathed. That's always a good thing. Really trying to get this base out of the way. More so than I'm worried about the enemies, just so that I can try and keep moving and save as much time as possible. At this point, we pretty much have everything that I would need in terms of POIs. I mean, obviously finding super credits and more war bond medals is great. But, again, when soloing with this challenge, I prefer to just kind of get things done and move on to the next mission as opposed to, like, deeply combing the entire map. I feel like it's more of an efficient use of your time to just bang out missions than to try and really 100% everything on the map. Again, if you have more people, that can change things a little bit, but just remember, especially if you check out that video I talked about with spawning, that when you split up, each person becomes their own entity group, and every time a new patrol spawns, there'll be that many more patrols spawning for each entity group of players that are sp split up with, you know, not within like, think 75 meters or something like that of, of one another. So we see the last little blue objective right there is the gun. That one's super time consuming and I always get swarmed a lot when I'm trying to fill it up. So I make a tactical decision that I really just don't need it on this map. Like, yeah, it'll hurt our star rating and our overall EXP at the end not getting it done. But again, sometimes you just kind of pick and choose what you want to do and what you want to not do. I'm trying to be stealthy there and sneak into this place as undetected as I could, at least until I get this briefcase out of my hands. I, that's why you see me, I'm just like straight up ignoring enemies, just trying to get this thing into its slot. And then we'll deal with it after the fact. Trying to reposition myself here. The bugs don't always like to just jump off of cliffs, even if they're relatively short ones. So you can use that in addition to water to help kind of confuse their pathing. They'll always try and take the path of least resistance to get to you. So scaling terrain and crossing water is something that the bugs generally will avoid, unless it's, you know, really not that complicated terrain. Really good eagle airstrike there, took out the charger, and I just dropped in the EATs, so... Have to save him for something else, I guess. Now, since we are on the objective spot, the enemy patrols will be spawning a little bit more frequently, so... I'm sure we'll get some good value out of those, eventually. the flamethrower like I mentioned before to just kind of hold my ground and push backwards. See, I wasn't even pushing backwards enough there and a bug that was on fire came and set me on fire. So again, watch why I generally always just shoot the flamethrower and back up. Clean all these guys out. And I do believe the objective was fairly quiet from this point onwards. But I'm watching back the footage for the first time with y'all here, so... Ah, yes, I do believe we show off more of the stealth mechanics in the game here. 
which is something that, guys, take note of this upcoming sequence here, because being stealthy in this game can save you a lot of headache, and it works really well, so we'll, we'll be checking that out here shortly. Drop in more supplies, just preparing for a fight, even if there's not one, tossing a grenade so I can get that extra fifth one, and shooting out the light, because again, the lights put a lot of glare on these computers, which is it's kind of annoying for me, so maybe that even helped with the stealth you're about to see. Who knows? But uh, yeah, so at this point, I start looking around because I know that there's going to be a patrol coming on me. Actually, wait, I think I got to spin the dish first. Yeah, stealth part comes after we spin the dish. Sorry, getting a little bit ahead of myself here. Now, of course, these dishes, both the submissions and primaries when you're doing them solo, they do emit a chime. If the computer terminal is close enough to you, you can just listen for when to stop. But um, on that one, I just looked at the picture and also saw that you just needed to be 180 degrees uh, movement on the dish would have been good also. But listening for the chime helps. So yes, here's where I start to realize that I haven't seen a bug in a while and there has to be a patrol somewhere nearby. So we start engaging in the game's stealth mechanics yet again. Which again, actually quite fun and intuitive. The bugs are going to patrol through and I'm just going to play dead. You know, just do a little bit of hiding. Just a little bit of a pretend I'm not here. You heard a sleight of hand? Well, this is just sleight of body. A little bit of cover there. A little, 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 little bit of sneaky peeky. And wait for them to be on their way. Again, you could have engaged in that fight, I very well could have, but the chances that one of them would have puked up a bug breach are extremely high, and then I would have been swamped. And look at this code on the screen. If I was swamped, there's no way you're typing in that code. Someone's gonna be hitting you in the ass every time you're trying. So, I feel like stealth was the right play there. Let me know what you guys think. What would you have done? Uh, at this point, I'm still packing the flamethrower, so I just decide to leave the EATs behind, because the next time I need one, the cooldown will probably be up. And I think we see our first Titan of the mission here. Titans combo very well. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. And as soon as I threw the, the orbital at him, an ion storm starts. So that's just great. There's great luck, great convenient timing there. Like, literally, it left my hand and it landed, and then nope. But yeah, the, um, the EATs are great for the Titans, too. It usually takes... And there's a range, there's some variable damage here, but either one orbital rail gun will kill the Titan, or like one orbital rail cannon and like one or two tank, or uh, bleh, disposable anti-tank shots to the head will take them out. I think I do it in reverse order here since the ion storm is going. I just do the two rockets and then finish them up with the orbital rail as soon as I can. The storm subsides. Yeah, just stay on your toes, stay flanking. Some good tips there on how to uh, deal with problem spawns during problem environmental events. Now, I do, at this point, the main mission is done. So, at this point, I would recommend extracting. Now, I am, at this point, trying to be greedy and take out this last bug hold just to improve my star rating a little bit, but we're pretty much at the five minute mark. Of course, you get an extra two minutes for the emergency shuttle being automatically dispatched. So really, we got like seven, eight minutes left. But with all the swarms that can come in and the travel time required, it can be it can be kind of tight trying to squeeze in every activity on the map. And I'm pretty sure I get punished for, for being greedy like this too. So again, at that point, as soon as I was done with the relay station, the smart thing to do would have just been to leave, head towards the extraction. But, but of course, you know, for the content, for the video, decided to extend my, my playtime here a little bit. Somehow managed to miss his head on that shot there. He's bleeding pretty heavily. I just kind of ignore him for now, hoping he'll bleed out. And we got another Titan. It was about this point that I realized that I'm a little bit too overwhelmed with a little bit not enough time left to deal with all of this. I'll be waiting on my eagle to restock, and now I'm swarmed by hunters, and yeah, I'm dead. So zero lives left, 
Only four and a half minutes left. Again, the smart thing to do would probably be to just dip. Leave the mission. Especially for me, because I don't even need samples right now. I'm just kind of stockpiling them until future content. But, for the video, of course we decide to go back in and get our samples back. Not something that you need to do. If you're worried about failing the mission, it's honestly better to just try and get out. Get samples on your next mission. You know, if you're a real soldier, it wouldn't be worth dying over. But thankfully, it's just a video game. <laughs> we don't care. Yeah, the, the, the only reason I illustrate that is because that's not part of the tips portion of this video. The tip is to successfully complete the mission to just bounce. Now we're just... We're just doing, we're just doing extra here. We're doing too much. See, I'm more worried about the hunters right now than I am the, the bile titan. Not a good little bit of distance between me and the Titan, but they can close the gap really fast. Okay. Slowed down by some complicated terrain here. Really just trying to flank and get back around to that last launcher and to get my samples back. I've kind of baited everything away from where I died over to my new spot. I'll go back over here to the old spot. And so maybe this is kind of still part of the tips video. So, you know, if you die, drop your sample at the very end of everything. You know, I guess this is a good little showcase on how to distract enemies and flank back around and get your stuff back. And finally got the rail back just to clean him up. You know, as long as you, again, stay in motion, some threats are kind of ignorable. Now, as soon as you start standing still, things change, but stay on your toes. And you should have a way to deal with almost every situation. So yeah, at this point, we pretty much just decided to abandon both the blue cannon and that last bug hole up there. There's actually another really tiny one up in the top right of the map that I must have just thought was an enemy. So I actually missed that one too. But at this point, I'm just worried about getting out. Another helpful point or two, is you have a little bit of damage on you, I've covered this a few times now, but just stay with a little bit of damage and then wait until your stamina bar is depleted, pop the stim then, of course your health will go back up to full and you'll fill your stamina. So it's a great way to, to cover a little bit of extra ground quicker there is if you don't just heal to top off your health, but save it for stamina topping off as well. Now on the map, I did leave some samples from when I died the first time. You know, I figured I would just leave them over there because they were close enough to the extract, and I figured I would just swing through and grab them on my way out. Which is essentially what I'm doing now. And we pretty much have cleared out, you know, everything on the map. We've done all the objectives, at least the primary ones. And then the gun, of course, you know. I wish it was anything else. If it had been a different a spore mushroom or anything else, a stalker nest, anything other than maybe another flyer nest, we probably could have banged it out and just gotten all the objectives done. But the gun just wasn't, it wasn't really worth the time. Especially when we have no time. Just came all the way back for one rare, rare sample. Just kind of also stalling at this point because I don't want the landing zone to get hot. If I had just went there and waited for the whole minute or two minutes, however much I had left, chances are I would have encountered a lot more things. But staying mobile on the map and just kind of trying to show up as late as possible to help minimize how much fighting you'll actually have to do in this area. Now, this is an extract that could be studied. 
because most of the time the extracts are hot, you're fighting, it's a struggle to get out, but this one is absurdly quiet. And uh, we use the stealth me mechanics once again to keep it that way. So I'm just kind of looking around, no bugs around, because like, I just got here. So remember, this, they're not going to be here waiting for me, because we landed here, made sure it was clear when we left, so... Basically, patrols are the only thing I gotta worry about. So, pop back into stealth here. We've got, what, a, a minute and 15 we've gotta wait? So, we're gonna do the same thing we did before. Again, great showcase of the stealth mechanics in this game. This extract could have been a lot hairier in this last minute. You know, all it takes is aggroing these guys, then one of them pukes, and then a bile, a bile titan comes out of the hole, and then another bile titan, and chargers, and everything, so. Just showing off a nice, clean, quiet, easy way, the, the splinter cell, the Metal Gear Solid way to extract here. They just go right on by. Like it. We like our extracts nice and quiet around here. <laughs> the little charger just moseying on past, didn't even notice us. Yeah, see, aggroing the first group would have led to a bug breach puke spawn, would have led to the second patrol coming in with a charger, could have had bile titans, like two brood commanders over there, we would have had them on us too, we would have had all of these monsters pulling aggro onto us. Instead, we don't worry about all that. You don't get any more experience for, for padding your kills or anything, so sometimes, again, just the stealthy tactical retreat is the optimal path of least resistance here. Of course, the ship is going to start shooting. It's going to pull aggro. But by that time, you know, we're good. And we're out. Again, we pushed the lives to the very limit. We encountered the brand new flyers. You know, we're still trying to do this solo here. I do believe the game is in a more difficult state than when I made the first video. Like, even though we're still playing on difficulty seven, I do believe that just everything has come up a little bit. Some of the more OP weapons from back then have come down and kind of even the playing field out. And with the flyers that can one-shot you, I mean, they're more dangerous than stalkers. Again, they're right up there with hunters. So overall, I do think the game is more difficult than when it first launched. There's a little bit more content in it as well. It keeps things a little bit more varied and diverse. And um, I have to say that I enjoyed this little experience. You know, playing solo again will help you learn to be more resourceful. You have to rely on yourself to get through tough situations, which will translate over to you being more resourceful in a team setting. Of course, let me know what you think of the videos down below. And, you know, if you have certain topics you think that you'd like to hear me talk about, feel free to volunteer any ideas. Right now, I'm kind of just been sticking to making videos that are very dedicated to a point a purpose but if you'd like more general talking videos news updates on this game or even enjoying content on some other games i know youtube algorithms generally don't favor that definitely let me know i appreciate each and every one of you for checking the video out let me know any thoughts questions comments or concerns you have again down below and until the next time have a great day peace out everybody